Okay, so I just got finished playing Angry Joe on uh, at Mortal Kombat, and uh, he he actually did win the majority of the games, but uh, uh, and I haven't seen his review yet. He, his, he's actually posting his review right now, but uh, we kind of got into an argument. Actually, not a very uh, not a, not a mad argument, but we we um once again it boils down to how Joe and I are very different gamers, uh, in a sense, and it it's kind of like you know that. The, the whole kind of Mac PC, you know, taste great, less filling, uh, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, you know, you're either one or the other, kind of, you know what I mean? Um, I really do think in the end that it comes down to just which you prefer. Um, in terms of, in terms of like, what game you'd rather play other people at, at a party, or even just sheer nostalgic value. Actually, you know what, I used to play Mortal Kombat um, that was my game back in the day. I used to play Mortal Kombat 2 in the arcade when it, when it was still in the stand-up arcade. But, um, yeah, uh, if you don't know by now, I was not a fan. I, I am not a fan of Mortal Kombat at all. Uh, I really think the game is horrendously bad. Um, for a lot of reasons. And I want you to know, like, I know the first thing I'm going to get is you hate it because you suck at it. I, I do pretty much stink at it, but um, I can't stink at it too bad because I, I kind of blaze through the, the story mode. But, um, by the way, this I, I'll talk about the story mode in a second. Actually, I'll talk about it now. Um, what, what blew me away was the fact that I fire up the story mode not expecting a whole lot. And honestly, the story mode is the most heavily produced, uh, best part of this game by a light year. Like, and I know, it's like, isn't that so weird to contemplate? Like, the best part of Mortal Kombat is the story mode. But it's true. It's really good. Uh, maybe one of the best story modes I've ever played in any fighting game ever, which is, which is, I still can't fully wrap my head around that concept, you know. Um, I'm not going to get too far into spoilers, but I, I will give you the setup. Uh, the, the way that it works is, um, it follows the events of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and I haven't I haven't played most of the games, but I know the general plot line in that a bunch of fighters get together, fight a big bad, and somebody wins, usually Liu Kang. Um, but at the end of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, basically all the fighters get together around a pyramid, and they they try to climb the pyramid to beat Blaze and get the powers of a god and stuff like that. But at the end, the, the way it opens is at the end of Armageddon, everyone is fucking dead, like just everybody, and it's it's down to like Shao Kahn and Raiden. And Shao Kahn is beating Raiden's ass. And so what Raiden does is he realizes that this is not the future that should be the way it turns out. So he sends a message to himself back in time to try to alter the events of Mortal Kombat so he can avoid the Armageddon. And <laughs> if this part still kills me. Um, the message he sends back to himself is he must win... You could not have chosen a less helpful message to send back to yourself in time, ever. That'd be like if I got a message... If, if, if I got a message back in time from myself saying, Don't die tomorrow. That's actually more helpful than he must win, you know? Um, so I'll be like, okay, I won't die tomorrow. Alright. Who must win? Like... So, like, Raiden starts... The whole plot, Raiden is trying to puzzle together. He must win? Who must win? I don't know who must win. I, I guess it's Liu Kang, because Liu Kang is the best guy here. And so he's like, no, no, Liu Kang. Maybe Kung Lao? I, I don't know. Somebody must win. I know somebody must win. I know it's a he, because I said he. But it, it's, like, the least helpful thing. And then when he was sending his message back, he couldn't have said... He couldn't have said... Does, like, just pull, pulling the ammo out of head. He, he couldn't have said, like... Baraka must win. He couldn't have thought Nightwolf Night must win. No, he must win. Fuck. Jeez. But, my own complaints aside, it really does feel like it, it's it's a great story mode where like, uh, it's it's almost it's almost like you're playing through the events of the Mortal Kombat movie where you start out as Johnny Cage and Johnny Cage is by far really funny, by the way. Johnny Cage is really, really good. Um, he's my guy, if you don't know. Um, but you're, you're playing through the movie, and you get to play through, like, basically about, probably about half the characters, which is a good thing and a bad thing, because it's a good thing in that you get to get familiar with a bunch of the different characters, which you need to get familiar with them. 
But it's a bad thing in the sense that you're also being forced to learn a new character every half hour, you know? Pardon me. And you, you get to play some characters you wouldn't necessarily think you'd get to play with. Like, it, the, the, the story follows Sector, or no, uh, Cyrax for quite a while. And then you get to follow Stryker. And actually, Stryker's one of my favorite characters, which you wouldn't think that, but yeah, he is. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's actually a very well done story mode. And by the end, uh, by the end, it starts throwing you some curveballs. Um, not in terms of storyline, but. It starts to expect really wacky things out of you, like it keeps throwing you in handicap matches. So, it, I mean, and that's it, it. It's kind of fun to do a handicap match every once in a while, but then it starts getting really sadistic with the handicaps. Like you have to fight Goro and uh, Kintaro in a, a handicap match with Sub Zero, and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ! And the last boss, Shao Kahn, at the end is is supremely annoying, and it's possible to beat him. I did it. I actually did it surprisingly fast, but that's not that's not to credit myself in any way. You just have to learn to beat Shao Kahn to fight like a complete pussy. You know, you have to spam the shit out of your teleport move, and and what what kills me is Shao Kahn at the end. He basically no sells your moves. Like he doesn't take any damage except immediately after he throws an attack. So it's almost like you're playing Mike Tyson's Punch Out after a fashion, where you're just trying to dodge his attacks and and kind of stick and move. So, but you're 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 playing a very unmortal combat type game by that point, and you're you're stuck with Raiden, who I fucking hate, Raiden. Uh, but yeah, but story mode is fantastic, and if nothing else, it's worth a rental just so you can play through the story mode because it really, it, it's kind of like it's almost like a sequel. It's it's a better sequel to the movie, you know. It's it's almost like if if you were gonna make a movie for Mortal Kombat, was it Armageddon, the the sequel? You'd rather just watch this. You'd rather watch the story mode to this. It's that good. But now for the bad. Um, again, I haven't seen what Joe what what Joe said, but I know he's very positive on it. And uh, uh, where to start? Um, well, for one, I I wanted to play the multiplayer before I gave my opinion, just so people. I knew I knew the first complaint I was going to get was, well, you didn't play the whole game, so you can't judge the full experience. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, I got the full experience now, and I can tell you my opinion has gone down. Uh, and again, it, it, here's the thing. I, I want you to. I, I lost the majority of my matches, but I want you to know my my negative opinion is not because I lost them. I actually had a lot of fun playing uh, when it was a fair fight, playing other other people like Joe. Joe actually won most of the matches, and I was getting my ass kicked. But um, Joe's girlfriend beat me up like twice. Um, but I was actually having fun when it was a good fight. And so if you if you're at like a home console and you're playing with other people who know the game, and that's a key. It's actually okay, but the net coding in Mortal Kombat, at least the 360 version, is so bad that it's virtually unplayable. Um, if you're playing one on one, it's not too much of a problem. But there's this mode called King of the Hill, where people kind of line up. There's two people who fight, and the other people watch. And you can st you can keep fighting as long as you keep winning, but the person the loser gets replaced with the person in the front of the line, it's and you get to watch. So it's it's kind of cool that way in theory. But what doesn't work about it is the fact that when you play the King of the Hill mode, it's laggy as all hell. It's virtually unplayable as King of the Hill. And so first we were thinking, is it my connection? Is it Joe's connection? But we played one-on-one, -on -one, it worked. It's just the sheer fact that when you start getting into the King of the Hill mode, somebody's connection or the net coding is bad or something like that. The server, I don't know. But the King of the Hill is almost unplayable. And that's, it really is bottom line. And Joe would actually agree with me on that. Uh, he wouldn't, he, yeah, he... If you were to ask him, in fact, if you, I think he kind of wishes he could, he could reshoot part of that review. Just so he, he said, he said the net coding was so bad he wished he could knock a point off. Um, but when it comes to the fighting itself, and this is probably going to come down to personal preference, uh, you know whether or not you prefer uh, Street Fighter Four, Marvel vs. Capcom, or some other game. Uh, I just I got really frustrated playing this game, even when I was doing well. If, if that makes sense. Um, you know, like I said, e even in the story mode when I was winning quite a lot, I was I was kind of pulling my hair out with some of the stupidity the stupidity that goes on with some of these characters. And here's here's the one thing that really bugs me. And I know, here, here's the thing that people are going to yell at me about, and they're going to say, you just suck at this game. But I hate the teleport moves. 
the moves. And what's, what kills me is there's like a third to about a half of these characters have these moves. So like you can't, argue, I, I can't really argue like, oh, this character's broken, this character sucks, he's lame. It's about half the characters that are this way. And if that's part of the game, I just hate that part of the game. It's, it's a move where Noob Cybot is the character who's really fucking guilty of this. But almost, there's a ton of characters I can think of that do this where... They do this thing where they drop through the floor and they 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 land right on your head, and they do a move. So like Melina will do this thing where she drops to the floor and jump kicks your head. Noob Cybot does this thing where he drops to the floor and like grabs you and throws you up in the air and then German suplexes you or like fucking tombstones you on the ground. Um, uh, Shiva does this thing where she she jumps in the air and then she lands on your head. Shao Kahn does this thing where he jumps in the air and lands on your head. There is no fucking avoiding this. There's not. If you know it's coming, you can maybe throw up a defense. Like, I, I remember Joe one time blocked a move where I did that, where he did Kung Lao's spinning thing, and I ran into the spinning thing, and I, I got knocked off. You will sometimes dodge them by accident. But some, usually, even if you're jumping through the air, like if you're jumping forward, you're jumping backward, the motherfucker will land right on your head, and there's nothing you can fucking do about it. Scorpion, his entire gimmick... His entire fucking gimmick is the fact he teleports off the side of the screen, he teleports behind you, and he shoves his cock up your ass. I mean, that's he, the dude just fucking rapes you with that teleport move. And this is what I'm going on about. Where, like, all these characters do this thing where it's like an instantaneous fucking move. He hits you, and then he just kind of flakes off, and then he does it again. Like, the only way I could even come up... And I finally realized what I was getting hit with, and I guess this is going to be the learning curve of Mortal Kombat, where, like, I soon realized playing the AI, because the AI would fucking do this constantly, this little teleport off, hit you, teleport off, hit you. Um, he waits for you to jump, and when you're jumping at him, he teleports off and hits you in the back, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you, there, even if you, like, you could jump, there's no blocking it. And the, so the only way you could ever beat Scorpion was not to jump, because as soon as you jumped, he would instantaneously just beep, 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 and, and hit you so there's so many of those characters that do that and it's just fucking brutal um and i'm sure you guys are going to come up and tell me the counters and some of them you can block like i know I, I remember being able to block melina's if you know it's coming but it's so fast i just could never see it coming um uh smoke does smoke does kind of a reverse version of that where he he teleports you into the air and that was kind of funny ironically enough smoke is probably the character i do best at which Makes me a real hypocrite because I hate doing that move. Um, but where it started getting ridiculous was I was playing guys online, and I start you start to realize I played this, I played this not long ago with a bunch of friends uh, while I was taking a trip. Uh, they brought a console with them, and we played this all in the room. And I know this is true for a lot of games, but it's really no more true than in Mortal Kombat, where there's really a difference between people who know the game and people who don't know the game. There's no, there's like, if, if you're playing somebody who knows the game, you are fucked. And I know that's true for a lot of games where like if somebody's good at fighting games and somebody's not, they're probably going to lose. But my point is, Mortal Kombat more than most of the other games kind of has this learning curve where you really have to memorize all your character's moves if you want to stand a chance. Because if you're playing with a guy who is, is even semi-competent knowing these moves, you're going to lose, and you're going to lose hard. And the, where that comes to be a problem is the fact that there's, there's, a few, there, there's a few problems with this idea where, let's just go for Marvel versus Capcom for, for one level of abstraction in, in the way that I think Marvel versus Capcom is better. Marvel versus Capcom, by the way, no story mode. None. Which is kind of ironic, but um, Marvel versus Capcom, and all those games, really, have almost every character pretty much has the similar has similar move sets like they do different things but it's generally fairly obvious what all the moves you know if, if you know half circle half you know half circle forward half circle back kind of the show where you can move you're kind of sold on pretty much every one of the characters moves you know it's um it's very simple there's not a whole lot of of there, there's not a whole lot of ambiguity when it comes to these moves mortal Kombat, not at all that it is so fucking obtuse and obscure what these characters' moves are. And, you know, a lot of them kind of do the half circle forward, half circle back, but they've got like six, seven different moves. And they don't all, you'd think, oh, if I know half circle forward, half circle back, it's okay. But what the problem is, 
there's 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 half circle moves, there's back forward moves, there's full there, there, there's full half circle back or you know quarter circle back, you know what I mean quarter circle forward quarter circle back, and then there's full circle back, um, down up back forward, and not only that, you're combining that gesture with any one of the four buttons on on the Xbox, uh, the the controller, so. You know, it, it's any one of these, and it's not immediately obvious. If you do, like, you can't fake it. There's no faking this. You either know the moves or you don't. And so, if you don't know them, you spend the first round getting your ass kicked, just trying to experiment, finding out what the fuck your moves are. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, it's the other problem, and this really plays into the fatalities. Is this controller is really not suited for the Mortal Kombat style controls? And what I mean by that is there's a lot of moves that require a fair amount of precision, and this does not offer that. For, for some reason, it's really weird how you feel like you should be doing moves, and it just doesn't work. For instance, um, like let's say Cabal's, Cabal's fireball move is back, back, I believe, X. But when you try to do back, back, X with the thumbstick, it doesn't work. You know, for some reason, I could just never get back, back X to work on the thumbstick. I had, it would be in mid match. Anytime there was any kind of double direction move, I had to switch my thumb over here to do it, and it was just really awkward. And it really took me out of the game to do that. And there's a fair few moves that do that, where you know, down up. If you're trying to do a down up move, if you're not exactly precise, you end up jumping instead. Uh, if you play through the tour, I actually had to spend 15 minutes on the fucking tutorial. Because it told me to do a combo, which was uh, X, A, Y, and I couldn't fucking pull off the combo. It told me what the combo was, and I couldn't do X, A, Y. You kind of have to roll your fingers, and it's such an unnatural motion, and I couldn't do it again if you paid me to do it. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just this kind of thing where it requires the utmost of memorization. All the characters are completely different in terms of, you know, what moves the... Uh, what moves do what, and the gestures to do each of those moves, forcing you essentially to get really good at one character at the expense of all the others. So you get so good at that one character, nobody wants to play you as long as you're playing that character. You have to for you have to learn a new character. So this is how every this is how every uh, game in Mortal Kombat starts, especially with people who aren't experts at the game. This is what I mean when I say that it's it's not a good party game unless everyone who know who's playing it already really knows how to play it really well. You know what I mean? This is not the kind of game you can just kind of get a bunch of friends sitting around and, and play Mortal Kombat and play it well. Because nobody's going to play it well unless they already know how to play it really well. You know what I'm saying? And people are going to be like, well, that's Mortal Kombat. It's for the hardcores. I don't know. But here's how every game fucking starts in Mortal Kombat between people who are either choosing a random character or people who are picking it up for the first time. They pick their characters, game loads up. Hang on a second, hang on a second. I want to pause and look at the move list. Boodaloop. Okay. Back forward B. Uh, Semi-circle forward at Y does the thing. I, what does that move do? It's, it, says, it says air choke. I don't know what that means. Um, the fucking thing. Uh, okay, are you ready? Now, you got to look at your move list? Okay, hang on, guys. Let's spend a minute. He, had, like, he has to look at the Molina move list. Okay. Okay, you ready? Let's go. So it's like three minutes between picking the game up, learning your moves, and finally getting to start the fucking game. Marvel vs. Capcom, like I said, every character's general repertoire of moves is generally the same. You can kind of fake it and figure it out on the way. You know, you're not, you're not having to learn what gestures do what. It drives me nuts. And that's no more true than the fatalities, where it used to kind of be, like, in Mortal Kombat 1, it was kind of a badge of honor to actually know what the fatalities were. Like, if, some, if you were playing an arcade machine and somebody beat your ass and then busted out a fatality, they were really fucking hard to pull off. You know, like, Scorpion's fatality in Mortal Kombat 1, you had to be, like, an exact fucking sweep. You had to be, like, just outside of sweep range to pull this thing off, and it usually didn't work. But when somebody did it, you were like, oh, that's awesome! Um, with this, though, like, every fatality is so fucking different you have to like, and th th again, here's here's the game. Whenever somebody wants to, because you want to see the fatalities. That's like the only reason you play this game is to see the fucking gore and fatalities. So like, here's here's the game. Whenever you want to play and do a fatality, you're playing. You can't do this online, by the way, because the game does not pause online for obvious reasons. But if you let's say you're playing at a home console with somebody else, here's how it goes. Yes, I beat you. Finish him. 
Oh shit. Um, pause. Moves list. Fatalities. Okay. Down forward, down back, Y. Okay. Down forward, down back, Y. And here's what the guy does. Here's what the guy does. The guy's like, uh, and you walk up and the guy goes, down forward, down back, Y. And he goes, You fucked your fatality up. You fucked it up. Because even if I could... Not only did not only did having to pause the game take you completely out of the fucking game, you had to pause it to learn your fatality, and then when you do it, you fuck it up anyway. Why? Because this controller is not ideally suited for the kind of complex movements that you're forced to do to pull off these fatalities. I was even doing the fatality... There's like a practice mode to practice your fatalities... And the thumbstick is just not suited for it. Like, if, if I were to do forward down, uh, forward down, forward, back, Y, and I started to do that with the thumbstick, it would be all, it would be like forward, down, up, forward, down, Y, and it, like, it would fuck up. Obviously, it's not reading your inputs correctly, so you have to go to the D-pad, but it even fucks the D-pad up. So, like, you have to be very fucking deliberate with your movements to get the fatalities to go, and half the time, they don't work anyway. So it's there's really nothing more disappointing playing this game than getting set up for a fatality and then just doing some limp-wristed left hook, you know, left hook to the face and the guy goes down. Or just kicking the guy in the kneecap and he goes, uh, and he goes down. It's, it's really fucking stupid. And I know it, it removes the mystique of the fatalities, but couldn't you just assign it to, like, one movement? Or one, just, just do a button. Like, just... Just, just push A. You know, you you obviously want to finish the guy. Just push a button and finish the guy. Like, why do you have to obfuscate it with this fucking arcane movement that usually fails? You know, back in the day, it used to be kind of a personal insult or a shine on to do a fatality because it was really hard to do. I don't know if they're still trying to do that. Like, oh, you pulled a fatality off. You must be really good. Maybe, maybe that's the case. Like. If they're hard, you make them hard to pull off, but you're going to pause the game. If you don't know the fatality, you're going to pause the game and figure out what it is anyway, right? Because you want to do the fatality. So why then are they so hard to do that the controller fucks you over when it comes to doing them? So going back to my dissatisfaction with, with the gameplay, what I started to notice was that when I was getting my ass kicked... Not only did it, it's, it's really just a, ma a matter of who's memorized the combos and who hasn't. And th I, I just wish I could, people are going to say, like, that's the way it is with every game, but it's not. You know, it's not the way it is with every game. It used to be like, one game that re really used to piss me off was Killer Instinct, where it was really just a factor of who memorized the really long combo chains and who hadn't. So if you're a guy who manages to hit his really long fucking combo chain, you're probably going to win. You know, so like Scorpion, if you if you land Scorpion Spear, he's going to land his big, arc, big insane combo. He's going to kill you. Melina, if Melina does, she has this little teleporting thing. She hits her big insane teleporting combo. You're probably going to win. So, you know, maybe if you're down to two people with equal skill who have equal levels of memorization, it might be actually kind of a strategic match. But when you're dealing with people who are on very uneven experience levels or even slightly different experience levels, it's just going to be a massacre. And I just don't. I don't find that fun. I, I think that when it when it comes down to is when I'm playing online, I don't feel like I got beaten by somebody who's better than me. I feel like I got I got beat by somebody who memorized something online before I did. You know what I mean? Like Marvel vs. Capcom, once you've got the once you've got those core moves down, you can kind of have some strategic matches. You know, it's it's a matter of timing and pacing. And it's not a question necessarily of did I memorize this insane fucking combo chain? Um, and to take it a step further, like the, I think really the epitome of what I'm talking about is if you ever played Blaze Blue, I love Blaze Blue, and I'm really good at Blaze Blue because it takes all of that memorization out. Okay, what it does is it basically assigns it. It, it just tells you. These are your moves, and we've assigned them to the D-pad. So, like, every direction on the D-pad, like, if you push right, that's your special move. If you push down, that's a special move. Like, all four directions, you have four special moves, essentially. 
and you activate them by pushing the fucking D-pad. It's brilliant. So you don't have to do these little, you don't have to do half circles, you don't have to go, you don't have to do show where you cans and stuff like that, even though I kind of like the way Street Fighter 4 handles it, you even don't even do that. So like when you, when you try to do a move, there's so many times in Mortal Kombat you'll try to do a move and it won't happen. And you won't know, did I fuck the move up? Do I not know the moves? Or did the controller fuck me? Because the controller in Mortal Kombat is ass. There's no way to know, and so there's, there's really not much consolation when you're getting your ass handed to you in Mortal Kombat. But with, like, Blaze Blue, you want to do a move, you push the D-pad, and it does the move. It stops becoming a memorization exercise, and it really starts becoming a matter of, of mastering the timing and strategic placement of your special moves. I love Blaze Blue because of that, where it becomes more about skill and less about memorization. So... I don't mean to rant on about this so long, but I guess that's really fundamentally what I'm saying about Mortal Kombat. Um, let me let me think what else what I was going to say. Um, I fucking hate Noob Cyborg. <laughs> I fucking hate that character. He is so lame. Oh, God. Yeah. So you'll have to excuse me. I've been really sick the last few days. But, uh, yeah, I stink at Mortal Kombat. There's not much more I can say about that. Um... Oh, I was going to say something else. It was on the tip of my tongue, too. Mm. I don't know. That was probably it. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Um, it does actually do quite a lot in the way of... This is a good thing and a bad thing, now that I think about it. I love games with a lot of extras. Okay? And Mortal Kombat has that. What I don't like are... Um, Oh, I remember. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to this. Another thing is the game is fucking glitchy. It really is. We're like, okay, here's an example. The, this thing drove me nuts when it would happen in the game. Grabs are glitchy. Like when you do a grab move and you do some kind of attack, it only grabs only execute if you do it in the exact timing that they're intended to be done. So like, if I'm facing, if, if two guys are face to face and I do a grab, it works. It works great. If if I dodge a move, like let's say let's say Liu Kang throws a fireball, I jump over him and I'm behind him now, and I try to do a grab, it doesn't work. So if your timing is off, if the guy isn't facing you, your grab doesn't work. I have lost count of the number of times I've been in position for a grab, the guy was not defending, not in any way able to resist my grab, I do the grab, and my hands pass right through the guy. It's, it's fucking unbelievable where how many grabs I've missed because the game has glitched out on me. Um, I remember actually having an opponent disappear on me completely where I remember hitting an X-ray at a really awkward spot in the game and the character just vanished and the game kind of froze at that. Well, actually, actually I, I remember I did win because the game eventually timed out and I had more hit points, but that was kind of a strange moment in, in the game. Oh, dude. It's fucking glitched in single player, man. The grabs wouldn't work. Okay, anyway, back to the unlockables. Um, I like games with a lot of extras, but I don't like games that make you have to unlock all these extras. It's it's it seems like busy work after a fashion. And again, this wouldn't be such a problem because it does actually have this kind of clever mode where you can get points, you can get coins to buy the unlockables in story mode, and that works well. And there's also like a challenge mode where you have to do certain feats. You you have to do you have to win a match under certain conditions to kind of climb these towers and get points that way. And I'm like that's kind of cool. So the way what you do is you have to unlock things by going into the uh, the crypt the K, crypt with a K. You, so you go down there and it's like you see this big graveyard and this graveyard full of tombstones. And it goes okay. This is how much this tombstone costs to unlock. And there's like there's like seriously like 300 of these fucking things. Here's the problem though. Um, there's no markings to indicate except for a, like a serial number like TM117 what these tombstones indicate so when you unlock something you don't actually know what you're unlocking and more often than not you unlock some stupid concept art or you unlock the, what killed the, what, this is what killed me I would unlock uh, I would lo unlock what do they called it uh, proposed sketch artwork for fatalities it would literally be a stick figure drawing of, like, Cabal's finishing move. So it'd be, like, this little four-panel cartoon of Cabal, like, 
uppercutting a guy in the air and taking his hook and slashing a guy in half. So he had these little stick figures with like little blood spurts on it. I was like, this is so lame. I spent a thousand, I spent like 1,200 fucking coins on that. Like, it's really inexcusable that they don't label, because you don't want that. You want the fucking alternate costumes. You want to unlock the other characters. And you want to unlock the fucking fatalities, because you only get one fatality for your character, and that's the only you can, that's the only one you can do unless you've unlocked the other fatalities. This is fucking un- I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. Like, I want to spend my money on that. So you have to go online, which I didn't do. You have to go online and get a list of what tombstones do what, so you can get the stuff you want to get. I just don't know why they add that level of obfuscation to what should be a relatively simple transaction. Like. All I want is my fucking fatalities. Why are they so hard to find? Why are they so hard to fucking pull off? I just don't get it. Other games don't put you through this mess. God, it makes me mad. I, I, I just don't get it. And, and so here's what it comes down to. Is it fun when you actually know what you, It's fun when you know what you're doing and you're playing with other people who know what they're doing. There's a certain visceral joy to the gore, to the fatalities, when you can get them to work, which is not often, but when they do work, it's a good laugh. But it gets repetitive real fast. When you start off the game, if you just bought the game, like let's say, let's say, pardon me, let's say you and your friends want to get together and play Mortal Kombat. You go to the store, you buy Mortal Kombat, you put it in, everyone gets one fatality, and that's it. You know, you have to unlock this various shit. So you got to you got to play with it. And you got to you have to work for your fucking unlockables. And and then what happens is the X-ray moves. This is what happens. Everyone has these things called the X-ray moves, which are like basically like the um, the super combos in Marvel vs. Capcom, where you do like a charge move and you do that big the big destructive move. So when you hit it, it's a shit ton of damage. It looks really cool. It looks really painful. So, like, Kano will do this thing where, like, he'll hit his x-ray move and Kano, like, whips out a knife and he plunges it in your fucking thigh. He whips out another knife and he plunges it in your other fucking thigh. And then he takes your head and he, like, rams his knee under your nose and he, like, fucking drives your cartilage and your nose up into your brain and you're like, ugh! Katana? Katana? And what's, what's funny about these is there's no way... These should be fatalities in any other game. Like, in, in Mortal Kombat 3, any one of these moves would have been a fatality. So, like, Katana straight up just sticks a knife in your skull. She's like, she sticks two knives in your skull. She's like, she gets behind you. She's like, knife, knife, back of the skull. She pulls your head back and then, like, shoves her other knife, like, right up your nose. And you're like, and then the guy just gets right up immediately. And you're like, bullshit. What the fuck? It's stupid. Like, like, Reptile shoves his fingers through your eyes. And then the match continues as if nothing had happened. And I know it's, I know it's meant to be over the top, and I know it's meant to be goofy. But Jesus Christ, these guys are getting fucking murdered. There's no way he should be. Able to... God. But here's the thing about the X-ray moves. There's only one. And there's no way to unlock more of them. Everyone gets one. So here's how it works. Here's the game again. Boo! Here's the game again when you're playing this game. So you're playing Kano, and Kano sticks his knives in your thighs, and he fucks up your nose, and you're like, oh, oh, that was awesome. Oh, that was brutal. I love this shit. Then he does it again. Usually in the next round, he does it again. And you're like, oh, 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 he, oh, that still looks painful, but it's the same one. Wow. Is that the only one he has? Third time. Yep. That's the only one he has. Fourth time. Can we just skip these? You will get so tired of watching these fucking x-ray moves. They're just repetitive. I mean, they're fun the first two times you watch them, but once the chuckles wear off and you've seen pretty much everyone's x-ray moves, the novelty wears off, and it wears off real fucking fast. The only reason the fatalities are so much fun to watch as theirs is because they're so fucking hard to pull off. So, um, there, I've probably gone all irate gamer on you guys. Let's face it, gaming is ruined. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I guess closing thoughts. It's not a horrible game, but I hated it. You know, I just... There's so many better fighters out there. Games that are better balanced, that, that actually make you feel like you're, you're kind of exercising skill instead of just memorizing combos. And as for as good as the story mode is, I would still rather play Marvel vs. Capcom any day. I really would. 
I would rather play Blaze Blue, but nobody fucking plays Blaze Blue anymore. Oh well. I'd I would like to play Street Fighter Four. Actually, Street Fighter Four is one game I haven't played in a long time. But uh, I'm not very good at that one. And I, here's 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 why here's why people are gonna say you don't like it because you suck at it. Not fucking true. I love Street Fighter Four, and I suck at it. I suck at that game hard. Oh yeah, there is there are few people worse at Street Fighter Four than me. Trust me. You find someone bad. You find someone's grandma. Sh grandma will beat me. I'm that bad at it, but I still love the fucking game. So you can't, like, that complaint, invalid, okay? Um, I suck at Mortal Kombat because it sucks. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to spend the time to memorize every character's fucking move list. I just don't. Um, even with Street Fighter Four, I kind of feel like, I don't know half the character's moves, but I kind of feel like with Street Fighter Four, if I wanted to go on random and just play kind of somebody at random, I could probably pick up their shit pretty fast. You know, I just, yeah. Okay, I've rambled on about Street Fighter, uh, about Mortal Kombat for a long time, so I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna go rest because I feel like shit. Uh, my nose is all stuffed up. If you haven't noticed, um, I got more. What's coming up is I got more commentaries, and I've got uh, I've actually got two movies I'm working on. Um, the games I know I promised Warrior Four. I've promised Final Fantasy X two, and um, what else did I promise? Something else. Oh, um, fuck! What did I promise? Oh, uh, Serpent Isle. I'm working on those, but getting footage... I got Basically what the problem is with those is Final Fantasy X-2 and Serpent Isle are RPGs, and RPGs take a really long time to get footage for. So I'm working on it. I really am, but it's going to be a while. It, it'll probably be at least like a month, a month and a half before I get that done. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to get it done as fast as possible, but I got like a... I've got um, a movie called Lords of Magic I'm doing... I've got a Reb Brown movie, which was originally going to be for February, which I put off because stuff happened. And um, I got uh, Captain Power. I'm trying to I'm trying to go through all the Captain Power episodes and kind of refresh my memory on that because I remember watching Captain Power as a kid. I loved that. So I'm really looking forward to the Captain Power review. It's going to be awesome. So until next time, uh, my recommendation is rent Street Fighter, uh, rent Mortal Kombat, and play through the story mode. And if you like it, fine. Trust me. Like. Like, Joe, I, I have no animosity towards Joe, and I'm not passing judgment on Joe in any way, saying, like, people people are saying, like, oh, he likes blood and guts, he likes flashy games, it's the Michael Bay of, of action games. I, I disagree with that, because that is a connotation to me that says Joe is stupid, that says Joe likes big, dumb games, and I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, it really just comes down to personal preference. Like, Joe doesn't have a problem with those teleport moves. He's like, it's part of the game. You know, like, you just gotta know what you're doing to play this game. And once you get used to it, it's not too bad. I'm just like, you know, I've played so many games where I've gotten used to them and I still wasn't as bad as I am with this one. Um, I would just rather take the memorization out of it and kind of replace it with skill, you know. Um... So yeah, like I I'm seriously, the I know Joe's gonna love that. I think he gives it a really high score, and I don't care. Um, see, but that I mean, like seriously, like when it comes to critics, I think that's the whole point of of game criticism is, um, there's critics you like and there's critics you don't like because you can kind of identify with that's the kind of gamer I am. You know, I'm really more of a story based gamer. I'm really not much of a fighter. I, I don't usually play like one on one fighters. I do. But and not a whole lot. Um, I'm really. I tend to be more like the RPG set. I tend to be more of like the strategy set. I play board games and stuff like that. So I'm. I, my my mindset is a much more methodical, strategic type of, type of more thoughtful type of game. Whereas Mortal Kombat is is really fast and fast and crazy and stuff like that. You know, um, it's 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 basically too fast. It's it, I would say it's too fast for a guy like me. You just. It, it just it's a sensory overload at some point you know I just can't focus on what's going on on the screen because it's just it's just nuts but yeah so like really when it comes down to it, I don't want there to be any kind of flame wars people were like oh angry Joe and Spoonie are mad like no it's it's not that way I think we both understand that we just we just favor different types of games and so you know uh, when it comes down to it is Spoonie likely to enjoy Mortal Kombat well actually probably yeah but I just, I, I've played better, I, I, when it comes down to it, I've played better fighter games, and before you say I don't like anything, before you say I'm coming down too negative on it, I've just listed off, like, three fighting games I much prefer over this one. I much prefer Street Fighter. I much prefer Blaze Blue. Trust me, I do. Uh, uh, what else? Um, 
I actually don't like Soul Calibur all that much, and I really don't like Super Smash Brothers because I have no soul. I'm dead inside. Um, wait, here's the thing about. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna close after this. I swear. Here's the thing about Super Smash Brothers. I don't get why people take that game seriously. People take that game fucking seriously, like, like world class competition seriously. Like, it's their jobs. It's, I swear to God, it's some of their people's jobs. Like, they go around the world playing Super Smash Bros. I don't fucking get it. Um, it's a party game. It's, it's really meant to be a mindless, button mashy party game. And I don't care how many people are going to email me saying, like, oh, there's a shocking amount of strategy and depth of Super Smash Bros. Any game with a random knockout condition is not a strategic game, okay? I'm sorry. There's moves that have a better chance of winning, and there's a move that have a le worse chance of knocking out. But... Like, it's just, any game that you have to basically house rule to keep it balanced, like, no meta knight, no items, you know, certain levels are banned, you can't do this character, you can't do this character. There's like a fucking page-long list of errata for people who take this game seriously, you know, to play competition. I've seen people on my Friday Night Game Nights, I played, a, I used to play games at a, at a game store, we used to play D&D, &D, and we used to play, like, board games at this game store. These guys were so weird. They would bring a TV, they would bring a Wii to the game store, hook it up, and they would play Super Smash Brothers. Uh, I think it was Brawl. They played that, and they would sit there and play that, and they would play it for eight hours. And I know it's 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 kind of weird, you know, judgment coming down from a, d a guy who plays Dungeons and Dragons for eight hours. But I just I look at Super Smash Brothers, I'm like, really? You're playing that game for eight hours, and they never got bored. So, clearly I'm missing something. Clearly, I am just... I have missed the fucking bus on Super Smash Brothers. But, you know, it, I, I do get it in the sense that it's a party game, and it's a fun party game. Um, but this whole notion where people play it for, like, a com like play it competitively, and there's tournaments and all this shit, I really don't get that. I just... Trust me, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna draw a shitstorm for this one. I know I am. <laughs> I know I am. I shouldn't have fucking said anything. Oh man, I have I, I honestly don't have much respect for Super uh, Super Smash Brothers. I'm just like, the 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 victory condition is random. It's random, and the characters, they, they make no effort to balance the characters. And for a party game, that's fine. But for like any kind of competitive fighter, when there's characters who are clearly meant to be like just just dominant, like Meta Knight, you know, like there's a reason nobody allows you to play Meta Knight because Meta Knight is fucking broken. But, like, for a party game, you're like, okay, let the kid play, you know, if you're, if you're playing your nephew, you're like, okay, let the kid play Meta Knight. He likes, Meta Knight does cool things, and, you know, fucking Fox does the Falcon Punch and shit like that. You're like, let the kid play. It's meant to be for little kids. You know, it's a fighting game for fucking children. It's a children's game. And the notion that there's tournaments, there's, like, 40-year-old men sitting there in, like, fucking packs. There was a room full of these assholes playing fucking Smash Brothers. I didn't get it. God, there's so many games you could be playing. Okay, hate mail. Let it rain. Let it rain. I feed on your hatred. <laughs> I'm going to get back to work. Actually, I'm going to rest and get back to work. But, yeah, thanks for watching to my enormously long and annoying irate gamerish rant. Have fun, guys. Play Mortal Kombat. Watch Joe's review. If why, Trust me, you'll probably agree with Joe's review before you agree with mine. <laughs>